Hi, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video I shall be showing you some of the new features brought to play mode here in version 1.1 of Dorico. To get us started, however, I'm going to show you some of the improvements made to MIDI input. Enharmonic spellings chosen by Dorico now use a sophisticated algorithm that takes into consideration the current key signature, the intervals between the next and previous notes or chords, and the intervals between the notes of chords. Broadly speaking, Dorico will prefer to notate notes outside the key signature using sharps if the figure is rising, and using flats if the figure is falling. Spellings that produce a simpler interval, for example a major third rather than a diminished fourth, will also be preferred. When inputting onto a grand staff instrument such as a piano, Dorico will also use the context provided by any music already entered on the other staff. To show you an example, I'll input the exact same series of notes twice, but in the first bar, the left hand of this piano music is spelt as F sharp major, and then in this bar, it is subsequently spelt as G flat major. You can see how Dorico changes the enharmonic spellings of the notes to fit the existing music. As you input notes using your MIDI keyboard, you may notice that Dorico automatically respells previous notes or chords as you continue inputting. For example, if you input in the key of C major, E followed by G sharp, Dorico will spell the second note as G sharp. But if you then input G natural, Dorico will respell the G sharp as A flat, because that spelling now makes more sense in the context. If you would like to prevent Dorico from making retrospective changes to notes you have already input, open the Note Input options from the very bottom of the right menu, or by using the key command Control shift i and that's Command shift i on Mac, choosing the MIDI input page, and switch off Allow Spelling of Notes to be adjusted retrospectively. You can now use your MIDI keyboard to trigger commands within Dorico. Ensure that you have a project open, then open the Preferences dialog and select the Key Commands page. I'd like to set up my basic MIDI keyboard to be able to change the note duration as I input music. Now, admittedly, without being able to see my MIDI keyboard, you'll slightly have to use your imagination during this demonstration. I'm going to click in the search box and type Set Note Duration, which I can find as a sub-menu in the Note Input menu here. And this shows us all of the supported note durations. I'll select the quarter note from the list and then click this MIDI Learn button. Then with my MIDI keyboard, I can play a note or chord or hit a button or pad that I would like to be mapped to this command. I have a fairly basic MIDI controller in front of me, so I'll be using notes at the lowest end of the keyboard that I don't tend to use when inputting music. When I play the lowest F on my keyboard, this registers as note on 29, 29 being the MIDI note number. I then click the Add MIDI Command button to set it. I can do this with some other frequently used note durations, and then click Apply and Close. Now, when I play those notes on my MIDI keyboard, the Notes panel updates with the selected note duration, and I can quickly input music without having to move my hands from the keyboard. Rotary controls and faders are not currently supported. Let's now switch to play mode. Dorico's Piano Roll Editor has received a great deal of attention for the 1.1 release. It is now much easier to navigate, trackpad support has been greatly enhanced, and you can click in the ruler at the top of the editor to set the position of the playhead. The Piano Roll Editor now scrolls during playback. You may have noticed a couple of new buttons in the toolbox, and to start with, I'll click on this second button to show notated durations in the Piano Roll. You can click on a note to select it and use the arrow keys to navigate. Basic editing operations are possible, allowing you to drag notes to change their pitch and duration, and the key commands you're used to using in write mode work here too. So hold down Alt and use the arrow keys to change the diatonic pitch 
and starting position of the selected notes, snapping to the rhythmic grid. Again, as in right mode, hold down Shift and Alt and use the up-down arrow keys to modify the pitch in chromatic intervals. Use Shift and Alt plus the arrow keys to lengthen and shorten the selected notes by the value of the rhythmic grid. Now let's click on this other new button, which switches the piano roll editor to show played durations. The darker, thin bar along the bottom of the note shows you the notated duration for reference. But in this mode, editing the duration of notes will have no effect on the notation in your score. You can see that there are already differences between the notated durations and the played durations, and these are determined by the playback options. You can open the dialog from the play menu or by using the key command Control Shift P. That's Command Shift P on Mac. On the timing page, there are options for setting the played durations of notes with and without articulations and slurs. And there is an option to humanize the start position of notes by a specified percentage. When you have made a manual override to the played duration of a note, it changes color to let you see what edits you have made to the playback profile. You can revert these changes by selecting the note and then choosing Play, Reset Playback Overrides. If you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below to let me know that you've liked it. And subscribe to our Dorico channel today to see many more videos like this one. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.